Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. We are uh, polishing a car and we're going to do something you don't often see on YouTube, which is live polishing with no editing and proper polishing as well. So we're going to be using the Flex Force Rotation XCE with the Flex Orange sort of polishing pads. Uh, and I'm teaming it up with the little PXE. So it's a lovely little polishing combo. Force Rotation, free spinning. Um, we're going to be using Sonax Perfect Finish, which is like a single stage product with quite a decent amount of cut and a really nice finish a nice and soft to buff um we're using the korean yellow 360s we've got my flex and sealy lighting here john this car looks immaculate doesn't need polishing uh yeah unfortunately it does um i don't know if you can see this on the gopro but the car is covered in swirls you can just about see it can't you um which is completely normal that's why you polish them so i'm gonna put this thing on my head here we go hope that i get a good shot that works hope you can see what i'm doing here i'm pretty organized i've got my little brush um this has all been shaken up already the pad's been cleaned um let's get the polish out try and not get the polish everywhere okay that's enough polish I uh, should put the lid down on that really, right. Okay. How should you go about polishing this this wing? Hopefully you can see the wing. I'm not sure what you can see. I'm thinking it's going down here somewhere. I would just, I'm just gonna break this into two sections. This strip down here and this section here. So as always, we dab out our polish. So we get fresh polish over the bit that we're polishing. If we just start polishing without spreading it, then we don't get the same amount of polish. It just makes everything a bit more consistent. And then we go down to speed one and we make a thin film. And once we've made the thin film, we're pretty safe. Let me just make sure I'm all comfortable. Okay, so let's spread this. Okay, now we've formed a film, you know, there's no risk of me throwing the product around anywhere. And especially at low speed, if I try and spread a big clumps of it at high speed, like you can flick it a little bit. So it's good to do that at low speed, even though it's a bit of a pain, isn't it? Dropping the speed every time and then um, crank it up to where you want. It'd be great if you could have a little switch on these machines, spread and then buff. <laughs> so you, and you could preset your speeds for spreading and buffing. There's a great idea. It'll, it'll come eventually. Okay, so now we're cranking up to about four and a half, five actually on this machine. And we're gonna polish this and we need to be consistent, but we'll talk about that afterwards. Let's just get started and you can watch.
The reason I'm speeding up is because the polish is broken down now. Let's take this off. The reason I'm speeding up is the polish is broken right down. So I'm achieving less and it's really done its thing, but we did four passes there. I've got my cloth folded four ways with the with the four open side pinched so it's not gonna ball up and do silly things. I can just gently buff like this. These cloths are absolutely phenomenal. If you use them properly, there's no linting coming off any of these cloths, guys. Once you've washed them once, you get any of the loose fibers from the manufacturing process where they're cut, you get all that out. Use them with polish, use them gently, and there's no fibers at all. If you wash them, you know, with dirty old towels and all this, if you hammer them, if you scrub out interiors with them and stuff like that, you're just gonna destroy these. These are good quality cloths that are for polish removal. And they're brilliant. So soft. You still build up. See, I've built up loads of polish on the surface now. You can see that imprint. So really, it's time to flip. You still have to flip these cloths. And you always have to polish more than you think. Without the light on, there will be polished footprints sitting there still. So if we grab our torch, put our light on. I mean, the paintwork now, there's a little patch, hold on a second. We can put this, where is it? There's a little patch of polish somewhere. I need three hands to do this. Let's try that. The paint now looks fantastic. That's the bottom of the GoPro. Um, just incredible. Uh, there is a, I've just seen a scratch. So this is a single stage product on hard paint. Um, there's a scratch along there. Might, probably won't be able to see. Just going horizontal. Just fine, I can just work that a little bit more. But the level of scratches, we've gone from plastered to one or two left. So this is where the subject of, well, if you went in with a heavy cutting compound, and then finished it, you might have got those two fine ones out because they'll come out. So it might be a little bit more efficient, um, but it might not, and they're probably, they would have probably still been there. So you can do a lot of good work with just a single stage polish, you know, and um, a single pad, a reasonably soft pad on hard paint for these typical sort of wash related swirls. The key thing that you'll see with that polishing set is me really taking my time and um, really making sure I cover the entire area that I'm polishing. If I don't do that, when I wipe down, I'll find little patches where I've just been a little bit careless and I've just gone quickly over one little bit and I've not taken that time to really polish it. And I'll see a little cluster of swirls that I haven't taken out. So that's why you see me doing it that way. Some people will say you're doing it far too long, but if I go over it quickly, it, the results won't be good. I'm trying to see if it's possible to do all of the work in one set. <laughs> it's asking quite a lot of the product, but the level, the, the standard of where this panel is now after that simple polishing set is a standard where I am more than happy with it. What I will be doing is probably a final polish with a glaze type product, maybe the Built Hamber Cleanser Polish, and then a wax will go on top. So it will get one very, very quick covering of like a glaze and then the wax as well, which would literally take me like 30 seconds just to cover that panel again. Um, and then that'll be fine. So there you go, guys. Sometimes it's really good just to see polishing uh, being done. I'm gonna now repeat exactly the same thing on this area and do a very slow, you know, cross hatch se section of polishing exactly like I've just done wipe down and then that effectively that wing is done um it doesn't take it doesn't take that long does it what was that five five minute set something like that four minute set a long set 
So you'd need 10 minutes on a wing and get really good results. So tw 20 minutes for two wings, an hour for the bonnet. It's an hour and a half for the front. The front bumper will probably be about an hour. So two and a half hours to do the front of the car. It's not bad. Not bad. I'll probably call it a day once the front's done. And do the rear quarters and the roof tomorrow maybe. But you could get it all done in theory in a day and do good a good standard of work. But to really go that extra mile, wouldn't wouldn't it? You know, really work to a high standard and say, right, I'm gonna get those out. Probably be two sets of two sets of cutting maybe, or one set of cutting and a really long set of finishing with something like perfect finish or M3, something with a bit of cut there to take out any of those swirls that's just very light swirls that are left from the cutting process anyway. We've talked about that before. So if you've got any questions about polishing, let me know. I hope I'm gonna check the footage now and see that it worked. If not, I'll be doing the take two again. <laughs> see you later.